morning everybody. Um, as promised, I wanted to take you through the process of actually building the Aprilia engine. The um, problems I've had, you ought to see the email that MATLAB sent me back. I emailed them and informed them that the file import process only seems to deal with the surface, so it deals with only centroidal selections. And, <laughs> and they've removed the file solid. And they emailed me back and said, well, no, it does work. And, and literally switched off the, um, the complaint that I'd made. So, yeah, it was an interesting one. I am still chasing that up further. Anyway, what I wanted to do is take you through that, that construction process. Um, it's, it really caught me off guard, to be fair. Uh, what I'm using today is MATLAB 2019A, not B. B seems to be the one that has it totally removed. And it's not one that we really want. So um, what we want to do is build this up as normal. Uh, so if you've not done already, start MATLAB. So um, systems, open, systems open as normal. What I'm going to do is go new and simulate model. I'm going to go relatively quick here. Again, I'm on video, so it allows me to. So I'll go um, simulate li library browser. As ever, I need my baseline set up. Still responds just as quick. So I'm going to drop in solver configuration. I'm going to go to utilities on the sim multibody, bring in mechanism configuration. Don't forget my solver configuration allows me to, to define the, um, allows me to refine the present solver configuration that we're using within the simulation. The mechanism configuration allows me to define gravity and any external um, uh, natural forces that I wanted to be there. I always put that in there because it needs to be there regardless to what some people think. I'm going to go frames and transforms and I'm going to go world frame. Uh, space bar, zoom it in. Just arrange these as, as I personally like them. You can arrange them however you feel, uh, feel free, and feel is fit, whatever. And I'm going to bring that into there. Whoops. Just missed that. So I'm going to bring that back in. And there we go. So now we're connected. That's our world set up. As we're building the engine, as we discussed in class, we need to consider about the rotations first. So we're going to assume that the um, crank spins around the block axis. Axis, I should say, not axis. I'm going to drag and drop a revolute. Spin that round. Make that into configuration. Line that back up with the original. And there is my that there is my initial first hand position. Now, um, as I've said before, you want to be able to move your model anywhere you go. So I'm going to drop out of here for a second. Right click, and I've already added it. But right click and add files to selected folders and subfolders. So it means that I can remove that pest pesket address. Uh, I'm going to bring that down a little bit, and then let's crack on. So, going to get into bodies. This is the nightmare that's caused for the last week or so. We're going to bring in solid. With this solid, it's going to allow me to select everything I need to. And I think at the minute, that's all that I need. Um, I can come back in a little bit to get the rest. So I'm going to rename that crank. And before I do anything, let's just bring in the crank and take a look at it. Here on this file import, You'll know see it says shape brick. I don't want it to be that. I want to come down and come from file. I'm going to go um, from step. And I'm going to go Aprilia crank. You'll see all these other ones I've got here because I was playing around with different options to see if I could actually trick the file solid, but I, I failed quite miserably. So I'm going to click OK on crank and then a five. Now we're into the normal configuration, so I'll just bring that in. That is the crank that we got used to, but the beauty is in this now, is this now can be used as a solid. So I'll go to my um, address, gonna get rid of that, because I know I'm gonna want to be able to move this around. Then I'm gonna go uh, F5, just to update. I'm gonna go inertia. And my mass for this, I'll say 8,500. I'm going to update. Gives me my moments of inertia. And then there we go. So I'm going to go uh, frames. 
I'm just going to switch on my uh, toggle visibilities just so I can see. I mean, I know we've seen that the center axis is there, but it's always healthy to make sure. But I want to add a new frame in, and this will be my crank rad. So I'll rename that crank rad. Going to go based on uh, geometric features, select on here and see where the arrow sits. I click use center of cylindrical surface. It's been emotional. Now, the thing that we need to keep in mind is look at that distance. Now, I know what this is, but you see that distance there? That is 10 millimeters. Uh, we need to be aware of that because when we come to the end, we've got to line these axes back up. So when we get to the end, we're going to use a Cartesian to bring these back together. But this is why we're doing it. So I'm going to click save and then apply. So we've now got the two point axis that we're interested in. Uh, apologies if the 3D printer is annoying you. I'm uh, involved in another project, so I just need to make sure uh, that that project is healthy. Right. So we're now, we've now got that sorted. I'm going to hit run. I want to see if this thing is sitting like I want it to. And as ever, you look and you go, well, nothing's moving. Totally dead. Why is it dead? And uh, as ever, it's because of the gravity. So what I'm going to do is flip back go down to my mechanism configuration, shift my gravity, and make sure it works in the axes that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put gravity into Y, because don't forget it's Cartesian, then, spread, then square brackets will make a difference. So I'm gonna run it again, and we just get this, this balancing behavior going on, which is great. So let's move on to the next step. We've now got our initial crank. Now, the procedure of the two are very, very similar. So I'm gonna right click, drag over and drop. And then I'm just gonna rotate that up, bring that up to there and connect that up. Change that to uh, connecting, whoops. Connecting rod. Um, with these connected now, I'm gonna stay with the original R. I, in fact, no. Yeah, no, no. I'm going to stay with the original R because it is actually modeled from the big end. But uh, we're going to deal with the piston a little bit anyway, which is another what happens when somebody models something a little bit poor. So I'm going to double click in and same geometric uh, reference is the same. So 85, but this time, obviously, I need to change this to Conrod. Click F5 on there. Whoops. Click F5. Come on, you swine. F5, F5, F5. Okay, apply. F5. You're gonna love this. Okay, I'm gonna. F5. Okay, I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna try it again. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so it was there all along. So what I'm going to do is just remove the address again, keeping that, keeping that. And then let's see, F5. you see, it worked that time. I'll tell you sometimes. Um, it can be a benefit to change the color. So I'm just going to change the color for this. Uh, F5. And it just makes it, visually makes it easier to track. Uh, it can be quite tricky. So let's take a look at these floatings. Now, as you can imagine, the rod's all over the place. It's not the same preference, but the center of the uh, the big end is where R sits. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to build the little uh, little end. So little end. Use that from a selection process and come across to here. You'll notice because we're now using the the sensible way of doing this. We've now selected the center. So click apply. I say sensible, but cut, um, centroidal selection is useful. So it's me just being grumpy. So there we go. We've got Z's on both points. Don't forget, Z is our center axis. So click OK, apply, and then boom, we're on to the next step. Um, gradual process. Uh, this technique, by the way, I, I found it from one of the original makers of MATLAB. Well, the Sim Multibody, which is, I think it's called Steve Miller. 
his um, tutorials originally. Phenomenal tutorials. But all I've done is squeeze in some generic, some real, not generic, some real uh, ge geometry to give you a true example. So, I've copied and pasted. We're going to go piston. Um, I'm going to double click into there and bring that round. And then from there, I'm going to change that to my 79.3. Don't forget that is the genuine size it is. It's not me making it up. Uh, my initial coloring, I'm going to change that again. It, again, it really does help to visualize what the hell it is that you're seeing. Granted, in these components, they're quite big. And with them being quite big, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But um, it, it, it's, it's just a good technique to get into. I'm going to remove my address. Remove that address completely. And then a F5. And then get into frames. Now, if I open up on here, what you'll see is what we were discussing before. This is a random position. It's not clear where it all is. It's all over the shop. What can be useful is to set up a frame that becomes a reference point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a frame that will become that reference point. Um, I'm going to change that, rename it and call it connector. And what I'll do is selecting from the top of the crown, well, the lower of the crown or the groove as some would know it, and use that selected base feature. Look at that centroid of plane. I still think this blocks better as much as I was told I was wrong. Still think it's better. Anyway, so you'll see there, we know that our Z-axis is going to have to spin around here because this is where the gudgeon pin would sit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want my Z to be in Y. So I'm going to go... Do I want it to be in Y? I don't want it to be in Y. I want it to be in X. Just ignore me there. I'm being daft. So I'm going to go X. And then I'm going to change my secondary axis, because they can't exist in the same place, to Y in the positive. Right. So look there. You'll notice it goes that way. Um, looking at the original datum, stays with it. It's going to make my life easier if I can try and stay with the original orientation of everything. So because I personally like that, what I'm going to do is click Save and then Apply. So now we're in a very healthy state. We've got that piston. We've got the connector. We're actually going to do away with R. So you see on the show port R, I'm going to drop that off. F5. And I'm going to just uh, apply that. And now all we've got is one connector. So if I close that now, you'll see we've only got one connector. What I'll do is spin that up. And I'm just going to put it there because what we're going to do is we're going to continuously change things. And um, we're, we're going to keep updating well we're gonna have to move things around to be honest and that's where our biggest sorry i think you've just flashed off the screen that's where our biggest uh, issue is going to come from so moving this forward what i actually want to do is first connect it and let's take a look at it so if i hit run what we'll get now is this like a really 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 crap pendulum but what I'm actually interested in is not its motion. What I'm interested in is its position. So we'll click here, and then click here. There we go. Right. So you see that um, the center of the little end is running along alongside the connector. Now I measured this. Uh, this was straight from the CAD system that I measured it. So I'll snap that into there. And what I'll do is just snap that over there. Because what we need to do now is we need to define a rigid transform. So I'm going to go R, I, see at the top, R, I, G, I, D, rigid transform. So this transform allows me to shift that axis because, let's face it, it's wrong. And when, when I nearly said when shit's wrong. When stuff's wrong, it's not any um, good at all. So I'm going to snap it in like that. And I'm going to double click into rigid transform. So now we're on the rigid transform, and with that rigid transform, I actually want to shift. <coughs> Excuse me. 
<coughs> almost shift the initial axis relation between piston to comrod up by, from what I measured, was 11.3 millimeters. So I'm going to go translation. I'm going to drop it down. And I'm going to go standard axis. I'm going to go to my Y. So because I'm going to push it up. And uh, let's bring that down a little bit. Draw that to millimeters. And from my millimeters, I'm going to go 11.3. So I click, apply, and then let's update it. Again, that wasn't by magic. I, I genuinely I measured it early. Arguably, it may be just a tad out. Um, I mean, at a push, you could go at 11.3.5. But this is to dis, uh, just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. If I had a good jump in, this process would be a lot easier. Hint, hint. Um, so I'm going to click Apply. And then let's just make sure that this system's not going to start complaining and whining. I mean, let's face it, ladies and gents, we've seen this thing complain quite a bit. <coughs> so we've got like a triple pendulum <coughs> behavior going on. So this is good. Now what we want to do is we actually want to use this axis as our Z axis. So the process. <laughs> The best process for this is to simply shift it in the X. And if you imagine here, if you imagine this datum, if this was to rotate, this would rotate Z upwards and Y to be where Z is. So it would actually sh transfer, uh, translate that option around. I should say rotate the, uh, rotate the uh, frame. Okay, so let's get back. And let's bring that back in. Now, what I'm after here is an axis now that moves upwards. So what I do is bring that across. Okay, apologies, guys. Got um, interrupted by somebody who needed to speak to me. Right, so um, just as a quick recap, just to remind myself, we've just translated uh, along Y, 11.3 millimeters to shift it. So the piston now sits in a nicer state. Now what we need is that Z axis to move upwards. So I'm going to right click, drag across a rigid transform. Before I connect it, I don't want the system to get all messed up because this is what things can, it can genuinely do. So I'm going to drop that to Cartesian because I actually don't want to translate any further. What I want to do is I just want to rotate around the standard axis. I'm going to go, looking at this, if I go negative X, what it should do is give me this axis, because if I went positive, it'll push forwards and Z would come downwards. If I go negative, Z would go positive, Z would go upwards. So I'm going to go negative X, going to go 90 degrees, and then apply. Bring that in, connect that up. Now. What we got is we got one last thing that we want to try and do. Now, this is where the fun really comes in. Getting these loving things to connect. So let's go we're back here. We're going to go to joints. You can look at cylindrical in the future. But what I'm going to do here is just get the prismatic working. Just as a reminder, guys, um, prismatic will assume just a forward and backwards motion, a reciprocation motion, if you will. So I'm going to drag and drop my prismatic this is going to give me my cylindrical representation now you've got to follow me with this when i bring it in what i'm actually going to do is i'm actually going to work this cylinder as if it was coming from the home um so so bear with me if i bring this across Right, and you'll notice straight away that um, the base and the follower, so the back and the front, is actually facing more towards the home than it is here. And what I'm trying to do is to connect, because I've made all these changes along the frames here, and I'm trying to get this one to connect as well. And in a lack of better words, I'm creating a closed loop but a Cartesian closed loop. Okay. 
So I'm going to bring this across. I'm going to connect this to here. The biggest key in this is getting this blasted Cartesian and all of our axes twisted correctly. Beauty is, because I'm coming from here to get to this axis, technically is the same the um, output. So if I come off here and then go back to here, the beauty is, if you think about it, I'm trying to shift both these axes to meet each other. It's the same change. Uh, there is no other change with it. It's the same damn change on this, which is great. So I'm going to go translation. Right, so if I go to translation and I'm going to go Cartesian. Now, if you remember originally, um, we had that translation, if you will, where we, we made a centralized location actually on the crank. Let me spin this around, show you where, what I mean. We centralized it off the crank, if you remember. And because it was centralized, what it actually did is it shifted it by 10 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to reinitialize my uh, Y offset. Now, if you remember, our Y offset was actually 11 point, I think three. I'll double check in just a second. And the ultimate axis across from um, that, that translation is 10 millimeters. Now, I'm told you can run it without. We'll try that in just a second. It's just because that's a frame translation. I'll click OK. And now let's connect it up. We still may get some problems, but let's just see. At the minute when this runs, it should just fall limp. I, I've not done anything else to it, so let's just drop it. I forgot it won't fall limp. Think about it. This is now sitting in a hypothetical cylindrical cylinder. Well, it's now sitting on an axis which will reciprocate. There's no cylinder there because we're using prismatic. So let's just check it. So what I'll do is go back to my Revolut joint here. I'm going to go to state and we'll go velocities. And I'm just going to put two revs on just for me to test this. Let's go two revs. Okay, and let's run it. So we're running. Actually working. Happy days. Okay, so um, if I was going to calculate this out, how would I do it? A few ways we could do it. I like to track from the actual top of the head. So what I will... Top, well, from the piston, I should say, not the head, because that's technically incorrect. So I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to go frames and transforms, bring in that transform sensor. And what I will do is use a world frame as my reference position, similar to what we did in the, um, the linkage. I always forget what that's called. I know it's crazy, right? So spin that round, spin that cross, engage that across. Bring that in, double click. What do I want to know? I want translation in this case. And what axes were we using? We were using the Y. So if I come and I get translation from the Y, and just for this, I'll take translation from the Y, but um, for full verification, you would really want to add a bit more on. So what I'll do is just zoom in and here, I'm going to do a PS to simulate converter. And then I'm going to add a scope. Just one. I don't need many. I mean, for this, I just want to bring that in. Connect that in. Let's run it. Oh, look at that. Very clumsy, is that? Not happy with it. So what I'll do is I'll run, run into my model configuration parameter. I want to tighten that up. I want a smooth translation across the whole thing that's running. 
So I'll go solver. I'm going to drop my details. I'm going to give me myself a little bit more leave room. And I'll go six. And then I'll run again. You look, even the simulation itself, you see this smooth transition that's going on. This is a good indicator. So if I open up the scope, you look now, I mean, arguably, you look here, still a bit clunky. I could tidy that up. Right. Now, let's say I'm really happy with that. In fact, let me just stick a bit, something on that. Let's call that position. And you'll also see if I run it. It's now I've got a title. So, could I put that in a report? In short, no. That would be very clumsy. Screenshot, not clear. Look at the size of these. Be a very poor thing to put in the report. I really want to bring it down to one cycle as well. So really, if I drop this from 10 seconds, make that one and then run. And then come back, bring it in. And we got this nice, smooth um, uh, sinusoidal wave. But you'll notice it's coming from this position because it's offset in meters. So it's starting at that actual position. Um, we can put a reference frame in there to make it start at an initial zero position. It's just purely as to where we want to put it. Now with this, um, I wouldn't put that in a report. What I'd say is I'm going to go back to my library and I'm going to type in uh, workspace. This is a great, a great output tool. It will convert your outputs to um, to a, a, a usable set of variables and then you can actually plot it again. It looks sexy, it looks really attractive and it's worth use, using. So you can go from workspace or to workspace. I'll go to workspace because I'm going to export the data that's coming from this. And I'll call this position. Bring that out. And then we'll stick that to there. And I will connect it up. Then if I double click into that, it asks me what type of format would you like? I'll go structure with time. Oh, uh, Let's just go structure. It might allow me to do something even more sexy. So let's run it. Run the Here's been the very annoying ding. But um, what you should notice now is that you have this out. If I left click on out, go to plots, then go there. It's plots. So I'm going to go position signal values what I've got here is more of a nice plot that I can export I can play around with I can go to my editor I can change things I can make it that attractive this will allow me to play around a lot further and give a lot more of a, um, a nice output so let's say we're happy with that plot because I'm not going to play around with changing the fonts and everything. I can go to save as and in that save as I can ask it to save it as a JPEG and enhance meta. I always use the enhanced meta files just because they are absolutely mint when they save and they go into a report. You go, wow, that looks like it belongs in a book. So um, I'd always recommend that. Try that. See what you think. Um, I'm glad. I'm really, really glad we were able to go through this. It did incredibly frustrate me that um, it's been really difficult as far as getting this damn thing running. What I'm going to let you do now is I'm going to let you have a play around with this. Uh, if there are any questions, please bring it to the session. Um, if you want uh, different ways of being able to extract things, please bring them questions too. The beauty is on this model that we've been working on is... I've only extracted it from that position. What you could do with doing is taking the torque out. You could do with feeding a real value into there, something that gives it a lot more um, rigidity as to what's going on. Um, in the assignment, the crank's slightly different, so it's a little wider to en uh, encapsulate two connecting rods. There's so much going on, but um, this is just your basic piston, and I hope you found it a massive benefit. Um, if there's any questions, please get in touch and speak to you all soon.